What is up, ghosties? Welcome back to Tales of Spooky Coffee House. We're your hosts. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Veronica. And I just totally forgot what I was going to say. Jesus. <laughs> Please excuse me. I'm having a bad night, guys. Um, so Because of the ghosts in your room? Dude, shut up. I got a ghost right now that's fucking with me. Looking at me for like the last <laughs> half hour. <laughs> I'm the one that said it was there and then it like happened to be there and started like dropping shit showing itself to Chelsea and I'm home alone right now and like super tired not in the mood I'm hyped up on coffee and it's just a wild night I love that for you <laughs> yeah I'm sure you do asshole <laughs> <laughs> anyways this week we've got another regular regularly scheduled episode of our serial killer and haunted place of the week and we have a tarot reading for our bestie Steph. Speak for so, yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. We just had this conversation, okay? If I had to choose between you and Stephanie and getting married, I would choose you. So why are you like being that way? What do you mean? I can say I don't like her. That has nothing to do with you. It's all good. <laughs> Even though you hang out with her like all the time? I, I had well, not, not seen anymore. her yeah, not in recently. ages. She said, fuck Veronica. Left me in the dirt, man. She, uh, she, she did not. Yeah, she said it to no, my face. Did. Yeah, okay. I say it to your face all the fucking time. Yeah, but I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't we just have this conversation the last episode where you said you didn't love me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Never mind. I'm gonna take that back. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right, Chelsea, so I have a few questions for you. But before I get started on the questions, Ghosties, how are you? How are you doing? You guys have been so quiet. You know what? Also, since we've been doing these seven-day challenges, feel free to comment your answers because I'm actually very curious to see what everyone's answer would be. Because I feel like Chelsea, I know her too well to kind of predict what answer is going to be uh, for these daily challenges. But I want to see what you guys have to say. I Any low-key was really confused for a second because I couldn't tell if you were talking to the audience or if you were talking to the ghosts that are supposed to be in my house. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> What's the answer? This is so funny that this is my first question. <laughs> I haven't looked at this question since I wrote it earlier. What's the most annoying thing or random thing that I have ever said <laughs> or done? I feel like you're just opening yourself up for me to be a bully now. Go for it. I want to hear what you got. What's the most random or most annoying thing I've ever done or said? No, ghosties. You do not have to answer to this, okay? One answer is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, our inbox is flooded with... <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. I'll quit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I honestly... I don't, I don't have anything. Like, I don't think you've ever annoyed me. Well, I'm not doing a good job, am I? I'll Andrew work on that. What the fuck? That's, a, <laughs> that's offensive. <laughs> that was the only thing I could think of was you know, how annoying you are. Wow. With, with bringing Pedro Pascal up about everything. I didn't even bring him up last episode. And yes, yet, you did. I did? What yes. Did say? I don't remember, but I do I remember talked about talking Grogu, about him. But I didn't talk about Pedro. Yes, you did. No, oh, you know what? It you was know before. What? You're, no, it was after. Or after, yeah. The yeah. movie. Yeah, the movie, yeah. It was after. Well, you brought this to yourself, upon yourself, because you brought him up this time. But yeah, that movie is pretty great, guys. If you guys want to go watch a funny movie, uh, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. In theaters I was gonna now. Say, <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to tell them the movie? Because they totally were not part of the conversation after the last episode. <laughs> Anyways, off to question number two. Which American Horror Story season was your favorite? You've asked me that before. No, I didn't. I'm pretty sure you did. I'm pretty sure you didn't. I'm pretty sure you did. No one's gonna notice. <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna know. No, How are they gonna it's... know? They're not gonna know. You're gonna make me look at all of my notes from the past. <laughs> Go for it. Answer the question while I look at my notes from the past uh, episodes. 
Uh, it's a tie between Murder House and Coven. Murder House and Coven. You know, I didn't like Coven at all. Really? At first, yeah. I was like, I can't. Yeah, you know what? At first, I didn't like it either. It really didn't get good until the beginning. Or, from the beginning. The, like, the late middle to the end. Mm-hmm. Either way, but, that, that episode's kind of, like, disturbing in a way. Yeah. Um, also, um, I don't think I've ever asked you that. I probably asked you, like, off record. But... Maybe. What's your favorite season? Um, 1984, I think it's called. I haven't finished that one yet. I'm still on it. It's so good. I love it. I, lo- I, I don't know if it's the 80s um, part of it that I love, because I love the 80s. I love 80s music. I've been, like, Dude, um, they- listening to nothing but 80s recently. Um... Yeah, I feel like once I finish that season, that's probably going to be my favorite, just because I love the '80s so much. And it also has Richard uh, Ramirez in it, so yeah, I, I do remember that. That's a familiar name. Okay, question number three: When you daydream or uh, imagine something spooky happening to you, what do you picture, or like, what happens when you're like daydreaming about that? I don't think I've ever daydreamed about something spooky happening to me. Just like you've never it- just like thought like i don't know like you pictured yourself getting scared by a ghost like how do you picture it happening oh like that's what i'm saying like i don't think i've ever pictured it because it shit happens to me all the time oh so it's not yeah it's not something that i i mean i've had dreams before like i told you about that witch dream but i've never i've never daydreamed about it i'm just a i i'm a daydreamer so i daydream about everything yeah i'm a day i i'm a day <laughs> Please keep that, dude. <laughs> oh my god. You're funny. <laughs> like, I'm a daydreamer too, but um, usually it's about like story scenarios that I'm I'm working on or that I conjured up in my my head and yeah, I don't. I don't think I've ever daydreamed about a scary scenario happening to me. Or what about you? Are you? Person? Yeah, you're right. I am. What about you? I think when I daydream about something like that, I think about like what 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 would scare me if I saw it, you know? And I think for me, it'd be like probably laying in the dark and someone just staring at me, like eye contact. <laughs> like yeah, that would scare me too. <laughs> I don't know if it. I don't know if it'd be like the ghost that scared me. Like, oh my god, it's a fucking ghost. Or, like, um, can you not make eye contact with me? I have social anxiety. You're making me nervous. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> yeah, like, um, can you not? Thanks. <laughs> Look away. <laughs> you could be here all you want, but you're not going to be looking at me in the eye. <laughs> no. Dude, I could just fucking picture that. Holy shit. I'm just going to be like, Asko, can you not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> That cracks me up. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, I got some questions for you. I'm so excited. <laughs> Is it about Pedro? No. You know, you can ask me anything about Pedro, and I'll know the answer to it. Just saying. Yeah, I know. I I don't think that's true, but. Eh. <laughs> Anyways, would you taste human flesh for a hundred bucks? No. 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 I just said taste it. Not you don't have to eat it. No. All right. Make it, moving on. Make it a million. We'll think about it. <laughs> All right. Does licking myself count? I'm tasting my flesh, right? You know, I never thought about that. I I bet you we could make that work. Huh? Like y'all didn't specify. Y'all didn't yeah. Specify. Give me my money. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good point. Good job for that. Thanks. Have you ever created a voodoo doll? Yeah, that's something you've definitely asked me before. And I said no. no, and then I was like, have you? And you said, yeah. I haven't asked you that before. Dude, we gotta go through our you. notes. I know! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like we've said, just ignore us this episode. <laughs> Alright, what's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you while you were alone? The creepiest thing that's ever happened to me while I was alone? <sighs> Um, oh well okay i guess i'll say when i i'm i've mentioned this before in um like the early episodes but a few years ago i had to get surgery 
So when I was at home recovering, I kept my door open, you know, in case my mom or dad needed to come in and check on me or, you know, I needed to be a baby. (laughs) So in my room, I have carpet. I have carpet in my room and it's blue (laughs) because I'm cool. The floors right outside my room is like a cement slash tile type floor, a hard surface. So you guys know how like you recognize the people you know, like their footsteps. Like I know how my dad walks or used to walk. I know how my mom walks. Like my dad used to drag his feet. My mom's like super quiet, but like you could tell it's her opening like doors and shit because like she's she's Mexican. Like you just hear the Mexican from her. (laughs) You hear the Mexican from her opening the door? If you know, you know. You don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when I had my surgery, I would lay in bed and I'd hear footsteps right outside my door walking back and forth. It was creepy, but it was also very, like, fascinating to me. Like, like I just wanted to know, like, what is that? Like, is that a ghost? Like, cool. And I remember literally laying there, like, just soaking it in. Like, I'm literally hearing footsteps right now. Like, what the fuck? And I think at one point I wanted to start recording, like, audio to see if, like, my phone would pick it up. But I don't remember why I didn't do that. And at that time, I was watching a lot of uh, the Paranormal Files, which is a YouTube channel where the main guy, Colin, does, like, he obviously is a ghost hunter. I don't watch it anymore. I don't like him. Anyways, at the time I did. So they went live, him and some of his buddies, they went live and they're just talking to the fans or whatever. He, he wasn't that big at the time. He's he's definitely gotten more of a following now. And they were taking fan questions and they were allowing fans to go live with them. So I was like, fuck it, I want to go live too. So I went live and I'm talking to them and then I'm telling them about a spooky experience that I've had just like I am right now. And I told them about the footsteps. And as soon as I started talking about the footsteps, our signal gets cut off. And so... Kind of like right now? Yeah, so wait for it. So then we're talking or whatever. And I was like, oh, sorry, we got cut off. He goes, isn't it crazy how it cut off as soon as you started talking about the footsteps? Isn't it fucking crazy, Chelsea, that as soon as I started talking about the footsteps, this shit got cut off three Dude. times? Yeah, that is fucking insane. I'm not even saying who you are, ghost. Like, I'm just saying, like, I heard you be walking around my house. Like, that's it. Oh, and then... Wait, so you know who the ghost is? I don't know who the ghost is. No, I'm just saying, like, what's your deal? But... Can I tell you one more story that relates to the footsteps? Yeah. Okay. So, back then, I used to have this friend. And this friend and I would do everything together. We'd go everywhere together. So, one time, she had to use the restroom. So, I was like, all right, just pull up to my house. You could go in, pee, whatever. No one's home. And then we'll we'll leave. So, she's like, you're not going to go in with me? And I was like, no. (laughs) And I was in the passenger seat. I was like, no, I'm not going to go in with you. You should go in by yourself, and I'm going to sit here comfortably. He goes, she she goes, but your house is fucking scary and haunted. And I'm like, my house is not scary, and my house is possibly haunted. You'll be fine. Okay, um, um, let me interject really fast. As a person who once was new to your house, I can say that I had the same feelings from your house. Really? Yes. Your Your house, like, when you first like go visit it's really fucking scary okay so like there's a there's a vibe your house gives off that's just crazy when i was super super little like i was probably five or six i remember i was playing outside and this old man came up to my parents and was like can i come inside and look at the house i used to own this house and obviously we my parents told them no but he just stood on the sidewalk just looking into the house for like the longest and I've never let go of that memory. And ever since then, I just feel like it's because someone else passed away in this house that he loved or he used to live here with someone that he loved that passed away. I'm just going to say that really quick. Because yeah. whatever's in this house is not evil. It's definitely not bad. It's nothing you should be scared of. It's a ghost that has our best intentions. And I say that because I've done a tarot card reading that pretty much said just that. Anyways, back to my friend's story. I have so many stories about my house. 
<laughs> so eventually she comes inside and she's in the bathroom and I'm chilling in the car, whatever. And then I get a text from her and she's like, are you fucking with me? And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, bitch, are you fucking with me? Like, I hear you walking outside the door. And I was like, I'm in the car. And so then she calls me regular call, right? And I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, just come out. She's like, I don't want to walk out, out there. Like, tell me you're fucking with me. Like, you're in here. I hear someone walking around the house. And I was like, I'm literally in your fucking car, dude. I'm not inside. Like, I don't have time to be doing that. Like, I'm too lazy, you know? Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, bitch, I fucking hear you walking. And I'm like, bitch, is not me. So then I FaceTimed her. As soon as she realized that I was still in the car, she started hyperventilating. Oh, like she shit. started panicking and crying, dude. Not like full on like sobbing, but like watery eyes type of like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. And I was like, dude, you're fucking fine. Just come out. And she's like, no, bitch, I fucking hear walking in your fucking haunted ass house. Like, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude, you're fucking fine. I don't remember if I actually got out of the car and went to go get her or not. I, I feel like I did. But yeah, so that's that's another experience situation that occurred in my house involving footsteps and whatnot. Yeah. Your house is I've always had the feeling that your house is haunted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My but, mom like I said, and like, my brother I, have both seen like a black shadow in the house. I I have too. I was just about to say that it was a summer where I stayed the night at your house. Yeah, I I woke up in the middle of the night because I had to go to the bathroom. And I know for a fact that Carlos wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So there was nobody else in the house. Like, your parents' door was, like, shut. Mm -hmm. Like, you could hear them sleeping. Mm -hmm. And you were sleeping in it. Yeah. Actually, Actually, to make that that a little spookier... My parents sleep with their door open and my dad snores. So you you'd be able to see my mom in, in, in the bed and you'd be able to hear my dad asleep in the bed. Well, I could definitely hear your dad, but yeah, their no, their yeah, their door was shut. Oh, that's weird. Oh, are you sure they didn't shut it because I was there? They no, they never shut their door. Like my mom's claustrophobic. Like she hates clo- like she hates that I close my door. Huh. But yeah, she can't, she can't sleep with doors closed. Like she has to, I mean, obviously like our actual doors are locked, but like, you know, like how how there's a door in the hallway right here, right outside my room. Yeah. She, like, she hates it if that door is closed and she's in her room. Like if I'm ever here in the house alone, I I like closing that door and I like just having my door room open and like, I don't know, like that's just how I like it. But anyways, yeah. I never knew your mom was claustrophobic, but that actually explains a lot. Yeah. That's why, like, my my house, like, although it's somewhat like a maze, it's still very open. Okay, well, that was my last question. You want to jump into the, wait, is it the serial killer that goes first? Haunted location. Yeah, you want to jump in with the haunted location? This is our 14th episode. You need to get your shit together. Dude, we've had to restart this episode so many fucking times. I don't even know where we're at anymore. Like, I totally forgot. First of all, it's the ghost. It's your ghost. And it's definitely my ghost. Yeah, our ghosts are fucking with us today, guys, so... What if it's the same ghost? No, I doubt it. Okay. Anyways, yes, so the haunted location I'm gonna do for this week is the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. I am very happy to say that I've been here twice... I did get nervous the second time around just because I kind of knew what to expect. I knew what not to look forward to, you know, but overall, my experience was amazing. I, I would be, I would have gone a third time this last time that I went to Vegas, but my friends are bitches and didn't want to go. But hopefully next, uh, next time I'm in Vegas, I can go to the museum again and hopefully have a little chat with, uh, Peggy, Peggy the doll. And I'll explain why later. So you lost me at doll. You don't have to go in there. They actually give you the the option to to go in that room with Peggy the doll. So it's this like U shaped room, and you walk in, and then Peggy's like at the far back at the wall, and they have her in a case, and they have two spirit boxes on the bottom, just going shh, 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 like right. Yep, and no, fuck that. the thing is, no, let me finish telling you so you can be more scared. So the thing is, when you walk in, you have to say hi, Peggy. And when you're leaving the room, you have to say, thank you, Peggy. Goodbye, Peggy. Why? <laughs> that bitch can kill you. You see, once upon a time, there was a lady that went to the museum, did the tour, and she was in that room. And as soon as she looked Peggy in the eyes for a little too long, she started having uh, chest pains and had a heart attack. And there's yep. more stories, too, but that's one of the main ones where, like, the, they actually had a heart attack. Nope. <laughs> 
And so the second time around, for some reason, I don't know why. I just didn't think like, okay, I'm going to stand here for just an extra minute and see if I hear anything in the spirit box and then I'll leave. But unfortunately, I didn't do that, which is one of the reasons why I really want to go back a third time, just because I want to take my time walking through that room to see if she'll say anything to me. But they give you the option to go in there. So if you ever want to go with me or if you're ever down, you could always get that room. Yeah, you'll be going by yourself. No, actually, I, yeah, you you wouldn't be able to go in there because, okay, so one of Zach's biggest fears, by the way, this museum is owned by Zach Bagan from uh, Ghost Adventures. Um, One of his biggest fears is clowns. Yep, nope. (laughs) And there's a clown room in this museum. And, you know, I don't know what you're picturing right now when you picture a clown room. But picture yourself walking down a very narrow... Huh? Can we not? Can we this not is... picture ourselves? <laughs> um, this, is, this is very unprofessional of you. This is part of my segment. Please let me finish. So anyways, picture yourself walking down a very narrow hallway. And when you're walking down this ha- hallway, not only is there, is there loud, blasting circus music and clown laughter playing in loudspeakers but when you're walking down the hall there's literally life-size dolls of clowns staring at you as you walk down the the hallway it's great it's beautiful i i I hate that part only because of the the loudness i hate it other than that your clowns don't really scare me anyways i'll talk more about what else is in the museum let me not get too carried away here so here's the thing I'm actually going to read you guys um, what they have on their website describing the haunted museum. So these are not my words at all. I'll let you guys know when I'm done. So you guys know when it's it's from me. So here we go. Let's see if I know how to read. The 11,000 square foot property built in 1938 was originally owned by prominent businessman Cyril? Cyril S. Through the years, hostile spirits, family members who passed away there and whose energies remain, have been rumored to roam the hall's terrorizing past occupants. Occupants. Some longtime Las Vegans even claimed dark rituals took place in the home's basement during the 1970s. I don't know why, but I could picture it happening in the 70s. Yeah, I could too. Paranormal enthusiasts visiting Zach Bagans, the haunted museum, ventured down creepy winding hallways uh, and secret passages. Oh my god, what? And secret passages. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can read today. Well, we know that answer. (laughs) And secret passages into more than 30 rooms that that rival... Wait, what? (laughs) Into more than 30 rooms that rival scenes from Hollywood horror films setting the stage for frightening facts about each paranormal piece, such as the Dybbuk box, known as the world's most haunted object. Very interesting thing, by the way. This vintage wine cabinet inspired by the movie The Possession and is said to house a malicious spirit. Shortly following its arrival, mysterious protruding holes began to appear in the walls around the artifact as if something was trying to break out from within the exhibit. A Las Vegas marketing executive and Bagans both witnessed a black cloaked figure pass through the exhibit's closed door during a private tour. This has also been seen by multiple guests and staff at the museum. Also, yes, this is the same dig- dibbit box. This is me talking. This is the same dibbit box that Post Malone and Zach Bagans were looking at together when Zach Bagans had like a trip, bro. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to YouTube. Literally just look up Post Malone Dibba Box. It's it's very interesting. They even play a clip for you in the museum. All right, back to the reading. Among the hundreds of terrifying possessions, museum goers can even peek inside the VW death van in which Dr. Jack Kevorkian ended the suffering of terminal... Term... Got this. I got this. Hmm. Terminally ill patients as well as get a close-up look at the propofol chair... From Michael Jackson's death room. Oh yeah, that one's a trip. I forgot about that. Perhaps most unsettling is the original staircase from the Indiana Demon House, notorious for its powerful paranormal activity before being demolished in 2014. The wooden banister and creaky steps you want to from the house. Ho- what? I'm gonna interrupt you for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny that you say that because I was actually gonna do the demon house next uh next uh video 
Stay tuned for episode 15, y'all. Stay tuned. The next time you interrupt me so rudely, I'm going to storm off. Shut up. Storm off what? You're on fucking audio. I'm going to storm off my bed. Okay. I mean, my okay. office on the 64th floor in L.A. Um, uh-huh. The wooden banister and creaky steps from the house now stand in a dimly lit corner resting on a blanket of dirt from the location following its installation. A group of construction workers walked off the job and refused to come back. You know what? I've seen this chair and I've I've seen something weird happen in this room while we were being shown the chair and... It was wild. Um, but yeah, that's on their page. You can find it on the hauntedmuseum.com. I feel like I should just talk about my experience in the house. So let's start off with the Dibbit Box once again. So the Dibbit Box is in a small room and it's in the center of the room. And the way they do it is you enter one door, you go around the Dibbit Box and you walk out the other door. The thing is, is that before the Dibbit Box used to be in just like this metal, I mean, not metal, I'm sorry, this glass case, which if you look up that Post Malone video, you'll be able to see. The two times I've gone, not only is it the glass case, but there's like this wooden type of thing around the whole center thing. It's Barrier? Hard to, uh, sure. We'll go with barrier, yeah, because it's it's nice. It's a, it's a nice design. Like, I don't know. But yeah, there's a, um, a wooden barrier to it. Nothing happened in that room. The second time, I was not scared at all. I was like, whatever. The first time, I did feel very nervous. I think just because, like, I've heard about Dybbuk boxes. And I obviously know that this is supposed to be one of the most haunted objects in the world. I was I was fine the second time. I was like, yeah, you're just a box. No offense. Char- Charles Manson's cremated ashes. I don't remember seeing the ashes, but I do remember being in that room where they have, like, a bunch of his stuff and they have... I think they have stuff from, like, John Wayne Gacy. Who else is in there? Oh my gosh, I can't think. You want to hear something funny? I better laugh. So, John doesn't really do any of, like, the cultish stuff like we do. Mm -hmm. And so the other day... You 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 mean talk about it. Not that we do any cult stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he's not, you know, into any of that. He freaks him out. He doesn't want anything to do with it. You know, whatever. So the other day, he asks me. <laughs> he's like, you want to watch this movie about John Wayne Gacy with me? And when he talks to me, because I know he's not into that stuff, it actually took me a couple of minutes to figure out what he was asking me. <laughs> I was like, I I literally dead face looked at him and was like, who's John Wayne Gacy? <laughs> <laughs> just because it's the last thing you would expect from him. Yeah, I was like, he just, and he looked at me too. He was like, really? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. Is it the, the new thing on Netflix? Because I know, yeah, that, uh, yeah I want to watch. I was going to watch it today. And I was like, dude, we should do an episode. But I think we're going to, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till it cools off of it and then do it. But Unless you want to do a segment on a clown. No. But yeah, I just thought that was funny. I thought I would share that. Because I, I literally just had like a total blah moment. I was like, who the fuck is John Wayne Gacy? <laughs> Honestly, dude, I don't even, I'm not even gonna call it a blonde moment it's literally like i understand that like it's the last thing you'd expect for that person to say so much so that you don't even recognize the words you know yeah. like, wait what <laughs> it was just like the way that he was just like really like you like of all people don't know who john wayne gacy is and i was like i was like it sounds familiar like if what my mom that? were to walk in here and be like let's go smoke a blunt and be like okay <laughs> um, dude i i would i would think that i was high on mushrooms if she ever asked that uh i've never tried mushrooms but i'm sure that'd be quite the trip another object found in the museum is a whole ass fucking van uh dr jack kevorkian's death van he is also known as dr death says here there he helped assist 130 people commit suicide so what this guy did in his own van because i don't think he was allowed to help do like assist um suicides at the time he allowed terminally terminally ill patients To come into his van, he would inject them with, I don't know what it was, and they would die. So he he did end up going to jail 
obviously for that after being caught for doing that but like i don't know do you do you would you see him as a criminal or do you think you know what that's not a criminal act like he was literally just trying to help these terminally ill people like just have a less painful life yeah yeah you don't see him as a criminal no i i never have no literally he wasn't killing anybody that didn't want to die these people were all super sick they were going to be suffering for however much time they had left and you know it's that's not fair to them and with health cares like costs and shit like those people's families were gonna have a shit ton of payments to pay after they died it's not just like like physical yeah like i wouldn't want my i wouldn't want my family to suffer and watch me like slowly fade away and then have to pay like have to pay to watch me fucking die a slow death yeah it's like it's not just physical suffering it's a financial emotional stressful suffering type thing i'm i'm glad that there's some areas where they do give you that option god forbid that i or anyone i know or love ever has to make that decision but let's move on to the next item and the next item found in the museum uh is ed gein's caldron the best way i could describe what this room looks like so you walk into this room and it's set up like it's like a movie set like you're in a like you're in a a a room but it's a barn like the walls are made out of wood the floors are made out of wood it's creaky it's uneven like if you're like walking in a farm on the second floor it's just wood but it's an old farm like you know what i mean like that's what it feels like when you're walking in very uneven floors and in the center of this room you know the the big pots like witches be making their potions and shit in a cauldron yeah, I didn't know what a cauldron was, so I'm just describing it for those who don't know what it is. You need to, you can't assume people know what that is. So <laughs> what this guy would do is he would hang his victims upside down. I'm not sure if he would just like stab them and wait for them to bleed out. But what he would do is he would hang his victims upside down and he would let the blood drip into this uh, cauldron, cauldron, cauldron. By the way, he was a cannibal. <laughs> what? will you say that again no so he was um a cannibal and he also used the same pot to boil various body parts oscar what does it say here um okay gein would dig up corpse and use her skin to create furniture around his home and this pot would have been used to store body parts or allow the skin to be removed from the bone more easily and i'm pretty sure that the pot that they have in the museum is the original one yeah it is actually what am i doing onto the devil's chair the devil's rocking chair which is what the movie the conjuring the devil made me do it is based off of so with the rocking chair you walk into this room and they show you like a video clip no they don't i'm sorry they don't show you a video clip that's a different room so you walk into this room Doors closed, and then on the wall, they open a little secret door type thing, and there's a rocking chair, and then there's a spotlight on it. And what they do is they play the audio of the exorcism they were doing, uh, because that's how this this chair is haunted, because this chair, this object, was in the same room where an exorcism took place. So they play that audio of what's going on during the exorcism, and it's very haunting, very disturbing. You definitely want like a breath of fresh air after this room, which you won't get because that's kind of in the beginning of the tour. And I remember one time you were in there, and the girl had placed like her key or something on the counter because there's like a middle border type counter thing between the us and the the other wall where the chair was and out of nowhere her keys just kind of like blew over to the other side and fell and so we were all like tripping out on it but kind of not tripping out out loud because we didn't want to scare each other we didn't want to show that we were scared i think like we were trying to act brave yeah and even the tour guide was like i really don't want to go on the other side of the wall to get my keys so she was like very quick and hesitant and it was just a very like genuine scary uh, moment because like if the tour guide is scared to just pick up her keys really quick from the other (laughs) side of this wall like you know what i mean like yeah, I would love to work there. I can only imagine, like, being like, oh, shit, like, this is the room I hate the most. Like, for something to scare me like that, you're like, I don't know. So, yeah, that was the rocking chair. Peggy the doll. Oh, Christ. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just fucking scared myself. 
You looked you looked at your reflection or what? Yeah. You're fucking <laughs> stupid. I looked at my reflection in the um the front windows because my, my blinds wouldn't close, so they're still open. Mm-hmm. So I like I turned around and I was just like I saw my myself but I didn't see like my face, so I, it freaked me out. Anyways, you weirdo. <laughs> the next haunted object that I'm gonna talk about is Peggy the doll. Okay, the homie Peggy. I'm looking at her picture right now, and I will definitely post the picture on Instagram because, no, it's not because I hate you guys or want to do harm to you guys, but because for educational purposes. Anyways, I'm going to read this little part that I see here. A doll whose picture alone was said to cause anxiety, heart attacks, and headaches. There's a story of this lady that walked in there to see Peggy. So I was describing it to Chelsea. Uh, you walk in through one door, you walk you walk out through the other and it's this u-shaped uh room you walk in peggy's at the very back she's in a glass case right underneath peggy there's two spirit boxes going at it very loud the thing is is that when you walk in there as soon as you see her you have to did you just yawn again (laughs) oh my god dude anyways you have to say hello peggy and then when you walk out you do have to say goodbye peggy peggy or else you're risking death bro this lady walked in looked peggy in the eyes suffered a heart attack what she had a heart attack bro just looking into her eyes that's wild i looked her dead in the eye too i was like do it bitch do it i'm just kidding i didn't say all that but i didn't think (laughs) it i did want something to happen the thing is, I didn't stay long enough for something to happen because, I don't know, I'm a dummy. So I'm trying to go a third time. So, like, you know, maybe maybe my luck will be better. So um, basically, Veronica is saying that she's got a death wish right now. Not right now. I think I'm okay. I'm fine. So, yeah, that's Peggy the doll. Yeah, that's all I have. Um, That's all I'll talk about because I feel like I've been rambling on forever. I just really love this fucking museum. Any questions for me? If not, go ahead and, go ahead and take us into segment number two. Yeah, I, I think you answered like all my questions. Like I just wanted to know more about it. And I always love, I always, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I always love listening to you talk about your experience at like haunted houses and stuff. I think it's fascinating. Really? And I think it's, yeah, I think it's because like for me, I would consider you a reliable source. So, like, I can read stuff on the internet and be like, yeah, whatever. And then you tell me and I'm like, oh, shit, like, that's real? Like, Yeah, I don't bullshit at all. I actually yeah. enjoy debunking. It's almost become a habit. Like, nah, it could have been this. It could have been that. Uh, I wouldn't lie. Yeah, that's why I'm like, like, I know you're a reliable source. So for me, it's fascinating. Yeah, well, I have many other stories. I mean, listen, I still have a story about the Birdcage Theater to talk to you guys about. I know I posted the EBP part on my Instagram. If you guys haven't, uh, check that out on our Instagram. Go go to our Instagram. It's one of our seven-day challenges. And it, I think it's like the creepiest thing you own. And for me, I didn't have anything physical, but I had that EVP where you pretty much hear a male spirit say, they're coming. And it's fucking mind-blowing. So go check it out. It's real. It's not tampered with. I don't know how to fucking tamper shit. I'm not tech savvy. But yeah, I still have that. I have the Winchester house. Oh man. Yeah, I have stories. (laughs) I have heard that video before and it tripped me out. So, serial killer of the week is Belle Gunness. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her last name. I'm definitely not going to try and pronounce her born name because she's for, oh my god. She's from Norway, and I, I'm not even going to try. But Text it to me. I want to try to give it a go. I, I would have to look it up. I don't even, oh, okay. I didn't even write it down. Yeah, I didn't even write it down. So, Belle was born November 11th, 1859. She was a Norwegian-American serial killer who was active in Chicago, Illinois, and LaPorte, Indiana between 1884 and 1908. She has been nicknamed Hell's Bell. And her motive for killing was money. So she stood at six feet tall and weighed between 210 and 250 pounds. And she was physically strong and masculine in appearance. And that's, that's important to know that comes back later. So. Okay. 
She killed at least 14 people, but it has not been confirmed how many. It's speculated that she was involved in as many as 40 murders. She supposedly died in a fire in 1908, but we'll come back to that later. As it stands, her death date is April 28th, 1908. There's quite a few details that we're, we're going to go into. The first set of murders occurred after she married her husband, her first husband, I should say, Mads Sorensen. I believe that's how you say his last name. They got married in Chicago in 1884. He owned a candy shop, which burned shortly after they were married, and they collected the insurance money. After that, their house burned down. And they collected insurance money from that. It was said that two babies in their home died from inflammation of the large intestine, which is usually from poisoning. And Bell had insured both of the children and collected a large insurance check after they <gasps> both the wow. rumor, Yeah. The rumor from the neighbors was they didn't know if the children was actually theirs because they had never seen Bell pregnant. Sorison purchased two life insurance policies, and on July 30th, 1890, both policies were active because the first one was going to expire that day, and the other one began that day. Coincidentally, Sorensen died of a cerebral hemorrhage that day. Now, Bell's explanation was he had come home with a headache. She provided him some powder for the pain. She checked on him later, and he was dead. With the insurance money that she collected from both insurance policies, she moved to Laporte, Indiana, and bought a pig farm. So, think she? Do you think she was a mastermind then, uh, behind the other everything else? You know, I was going to ask about that. I personally, I, I feel like the candy shop was more than likely an accident, mm -hmm. and then she realized, oh, I can get money. Yeah. And so that's when everything started. I think from there, it's when it started to go downhill for her. Yeah. So on April 1st, 1902, <laughs> April Fool's Day, I just caught that. Uh, uh, Bell, <laughs> Bell married Peter Gunnett. The week after they married, while Peter was out, his infant daughter died of unknown causes in Bell's care. Peter wow. died eight months later after that due to a skull injury. <gasps> Here's what's Here's what's funny. It was a meat grinder accident. So she said the meat grinder fell on his head and crushed his skull. What the flip, bro? Yeah. She said that he was trying to reach for something on a high shelf and the meat grinder fell on him. Bro, I just had a flashback to Kingsman, the Golden Circle, where the poppy killed a couple of... No. Yeah, one or two guys in the meat grinder. Ah, skull. Continue. So after his death, she collected insurance money from him. Gunness then began placing marriage ads in the Chicago newspapers in 1905, so about two and a half, three years after he died. One of her ads was answered by a Wisconsin man, uh, Henry Gerholt. He traveled to Laporte, wrote his family saying he was that he liked the farm, he was okay, and asked they send him some potato seeds. When they didn't hear from him after that, they contacted Bell. She told them that he had gone off with the horse traders to Chicago. He was never seen again. Joe Moe from Minnesota also answered her ad in 1906. They, they talked for several months and he traveled to Laporte and withdrew a large amount of cash. He also was never seen again. But a carpenter who occasionally worked for Bell said that he saw Moe's trunk in her house along with a... a dozen other trunks so those are those are some of like the main people but her murders finally came to light in april of 1908 i did realize with bell that a lot of stuff happened in april every year or not like every year but like on april 28th 1908 bell's farmhouse in laporte burned to the ground the authorities found the bodies of a headless adult woman who was initially identified as bell and her three children the authorities were contacted by a lady who i i can't even be begin to pronounce her name, who had letters between her brother, Andrew, and mm -hmm. Bell. The letters included petitions for him to relocate to Laporte, uh, bring money, and keep the move a secret. She, this, this lady, visited the farm with a former hired hand by the name of Ray Lampfear, and upon visiting, they, they found soft depressions in the ground. So they, found, they contacted- what, I'm sorry, soft what? Soft depressions. 
like mm-hmm. soft spot. So they contacted the police. The police came and searched and they found five bodies the first day, an additional six on the second. And after that, they stopped counting how many body parts they found. Damn. All of the remains were found the same way, butchered and in uh, sacks. The majority of the people could not be identified, so they have no idea the exact count of people. And it's also believed that she may have fed some of them to her pigs. Wow. Smart, but well. Yeah. So Belle Gunness was pronounced dead, even though the doctor who performed her postmortem, her autopsy, <laughs> testified that the headless body that they found in the fire was five inches shorter and 50 pounds lighter than Belle Gunness. So it wasn't her? We're, we're getting to that. Okay. We're going to go back to the hired hand that I talked about, Ray Lampfear. He was Bell's hired hand and on and off again lover. In November of 1908, seven months after Bell's death, Lampfear was convicted of arson in connection with the fire that burned Bell's house down. It, he stated that she asked him to burn the farmhouse with her children inside, and he also hinted that the body thought to be Bell's was in fact a murder victim chosen and planted to mislead investigators. A brother of one of her victims had warned that he was going to visit the farm to investigate his brother's disappearance. This is not the same person as the sister I was just talking about. And Ray Lampfear said that this visit is probably what motivated Belle to destroy her house, fake her death, and flee. In a second confession that was never released to the public as evidence, Lampfear actually said that he killed Belle and her children with an axe, sprinkled the bodies with kerosene, and set fire to them in the house. It also gave details of the murders that occurred at the house, where he aided in, and his task was usually to bury the bodies in the garden. The, the reason why this confession was never released was because it confirmed that that bell was and they didn't they didn't want to release that he he went to jail and she fled and that's going to bring us to esther carlson esther carlson was charged by police in los angeles in 1931 for poisoning a man for financial gain carlson is believed to be gunnis because she looked like her was the same age that gunnis would have been if she hadn't supposedly died and there was no trace of Carlson to be found prior to 1908, which is when Gunness died. But it was never proven. So the only thing that they know for sure about Belle Gunness is that to this day, nobody actually knows who's buried in her grave. Wow. And that, ghosties, ends my segment. That's wild. That's wild. Ew. And you know what's funny? What? <laughs> Low-key, when I was thinking about, thinking about, like, my segment and stuff, Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? It would be really interesting. And I, I already know what you're going to say, too. I was like, it would be really interesting if I was her in a past life. Mm, it doesn't click for me. No? No. It clicks for me. <laughs> <sighs> wow, first yawning, now sneezing. Yeah, I'm allergic to your bullshit. What bullshit, bitch? You did yawn. You better fucking keep that shit too so people know. I meant to your bullshit that it doesn't click. Oh no, it doesn't click for me. How's that bullshit? What the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, she's Louise. Man. I don't like freaking Chelsea at what time is it over there? 11, 12. Uh, it's 12.01. It's already tomorrow for me. LOL. So who are we doing a tarot card reading for again? Your bestie? Our bestie, yes. We are doing a tarot reading for Stephanie today. La yes. Stephanie. That's what my mom calls her. La Stephanie? Uh-huh. Yes, really. vas. Yeah. She'll be like, I don't vas. Con la Stephanie. <laughs> Why you gotta say it like that? That sounds creepy. I always say it like that. She'll be like, where are you going? I'll be like, con la Stephanie. <laughs> Like if you if you need Spanish, that's pretty much me being like Stephanie. Duh! Like who else? Like I don't, I don't have any other friends. Uh, you have me. Yeah. Sad face. Okay, fine. Just for that, Stephanie is my best friend. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> You're still my bitch, though. We're still getting married. <laughs> <laughs> You're still putting a ring on it. <laughs> Our audience is gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> I don't get it. We are they gay? I thought she was married. I am for now. Yeah, and Pedro Pascal and I are in in love. Like he literally told me he loved me too. So yeah, that was I was so excited for you when you said that, dude. I died. Oh, anyways, let's 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 focus on Stephanie before I get carried away. 
So the tarot reading for Stephanie, she just wants a simple three card reading that tells her about a current situation that she's going through. So her three card spread is the current situation, the resolution, and the future. The current situation that she's going through, explained through the three of pentacles. So Stephanie, you're collecting, you're collecting Jesus Christ. So Stephanie, you're collaborating with others to achieve your goals and successful projects require different kinds of expertise and those skills are now coming together in the form of teamwork. I know the situation that she's talking about and Jesus Christ is that fucking like spot on. You've worked hard to overcome your challenges and the effort you've put in should be paying off soon. The resolution to the situation that you are currently going through is described through the eight of swords. So you're probably feeling trapped or restricted by this situation and you feel as if you have no choice. You're feeling helpless Hopeless and powerless, and this is actually not the case when you consider the bigger picture. When you change your thoughts to positive from negative, you'll be able to change your life. And the future is described through the Knight of Cups. So you're following your heart and taking action because you're a romantic, charming, and peace lover. You're in love with love itself. Romantic proposals and attraction might be coming your way, and you'll be swept off your feet. Aww. That's actually really sweet. <laughs> Does that mean she's gonna get pregnant? Dude! Stop. Dude! I was just... <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking, like, her and her hubby were gonna finally get their full-on honeymoon instead of their just, like, quick, you know, close-to-home one. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's just my, uh... I don't know. Now if she does, she's gonna blame us. So I I'll babysit. I don't care. I'm a helper, so I'm not tripping. She's got help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she would have help from me if I was out there. I mean, I'm sure her mom's gonna be super excited to finally have a grandbaby. I like how we're talking about like this is actually happening and it's it's, it's gonna really happen. Hot. It's gonna happen. And we're going to look back at this episode, too. <laughs> Would imagine, though? Okay. Uh, but yeah, she's got help. She's fine. She's in good hands. <laughs> uh, I like how we're so excited about her getting pregnant. And that's probably, like, not even crossed their minds yet right now. I'm I'm literally manifesting <laughs> a pregnancy from her. Oh, my gosh. That's fucking hilarious. Anyways, that's all we have for you tonight, ghosties. Uh, thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're not already, follow us on Instagram. We are doing seven-day challenges here and there because they're just fun and we love interacting with you guys. If you're interested in a free tarot card reading, please DM us, text us if you have our number. Um, if you want to go under an alias name, just let us know what name you want to be called during the reading. We are your hosts. I'm Veronica. And I'm Chelsea. You guys have a spooky weekend. Bye. Bye.